What I witnessed at this expo was assault, and that is not okay, ever. I went to the 40th anniversary of the Sewing and Stitchery Expo in Puyallup, Washington, at the Washington State Fairgrounds. That was held February 27th through March 2nd, 2024. And while there are many, many good points about this expo, there are also some very bad ones that I, as an event manager for the past 15 years, have not seen in a very, very long time. And this video is kindly sponsored by Skillshare, but more on them in a little bit. This event began in 1984 and was primarily a garment sewing expo before they had to add in extra crafts and quilting to help bolster the event with the decrease in popularity of garment sewing, which on this channel we are here to revive, at least as much as we can. So my friend Haley Marie Vintage did let me know that I needed to be ready to go on Tuesday, January 16th at 9 a.m. Pacific to sign up for my classes. Because according to her, they do tend to go pretty quickly for the ones that she really wants to do, which pretty valid that I was going to do at least a few with her, so I wanted to make sure I got my tickets. And of course, me being a stage manager, I was ready to roll at 12 p.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific on January 16th. Now, unfortunately, I was also in the middle of an errand, so I was having to be ready to go on my phone. And this did not help. Because while I was absolutely ready to go at noon, p.m. Eastern, the tickets were not. Both my friend and I were texting each other back and forth, discussing, hey, is it live for you? It's not live for me. Nope, no one's got it yet. Any idea what's going on? You get the drift. Basically, while they said that the tickets were going to be live right at 9 a.m., they were not. So whether this was a glitch in the website or a human that just forgot to push a button, either way, it didn't happen on time. And because I am me, I went to their Instagram to ask about the timing. Because by 9.07 a.m., they were still not live. However, with a quick refresh, suddenly I could buy them. Now, while I was able to get every class I was able to attend, getting them on a cell phone is not ideal. If you are trying to go to this expo next year, I do sincerely advise that you do this on your computer or tablet. Because every single time I grabbed a new class, I had to scroll all the way through again. All the one needle, two needle, three needle, and four needle classes to find the ones that I wanted to do. And a little trick that my friend used that then I actually went back and did later, she would write down the number of the class like 4010. That way, I guess when she was scrolling through the pages, it was easier to find. Did I do that initially? No. Do I regret it? Yes. And now because they do offer a whole range of classes from one needle, two needle, three needle, and four needle, which are all different levels of difficult and hands-on ability, I wanted to make sure that I chose one out of at least every section so that I could get a good feel for the expectations of each needle. It's an intriguing little uh, differentiation there. I don't really know if it's necessary. You could just go on difficulty level, but I get it. It's cute. Just go with it. At this point, people are used to it. New folks like me are just going to giggle a little bit in the way. And now, thankfully, most of the classes were doubled up on Thursday, Friday, and repeated again on Saturday and Sunday. So what I wanted to do was to compress my time so I could be most efficient and also not have to drive the hour and some odd change from downtown Seattle with my friend when I didn't need to for one class. So I signed up for classes on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. I'm sure you're mad at me that I didn't go to Saturday, but I went to Comic-Con instead because I had a free ticket. There'll be a video coming on that later. Free Comic-Con. Come on, people. That's what this channel is about. We're here to sew and to do nerdy things. That's what we do here. So we started strong on Wednesday. On the list of things I am not, morning person is the very first thing on that list. You, you know what sewing people are? Morning people. <laughs> It is currently 6.30 in the morning and I have to go downstairs and get hotel coffee and we have to drive the hour south to go to day one with our four hour classes. So let's go do that. <laughs> it's so early. Because on Wednesday, what is happening is this is the four needle classes that take four hours long. There are two chunks. There's a chunk in the morning from 8 a.m. to noon and there's a one to five chunk in the afternoon as well. And the only places that are really open at this point are going to be those particular classrooms 
The show floor is not open. None of the food is open. So you have to come very, very prepared for these days. And well, while we were prepared, there was a couple things about our room that were a little bit disjointed. So we were in room E. And if I'm being honest, had I not had Haley there, I would have been capital L lost because there were no real signs at the beginning to tell you four needle classes and where they were with like clear directional signs. This is because they were still setting up. But as I see it as an event manager, if you are asking people to come in at that time, there needs to be very clear signage right at the gate and extra directions as people are going in. That way, the very few classes that were actually operational would have had clear signage so that people know where to go. You accomplish this by making sure that those are the very first thing that you are setting up the day before or when you arrive first thing in the morning. And I will say that as we were being scanned in, the people at the door were asking us if we knew where we were going. So there's a potential that maybe they had a plan and would have told us where to go. However, Haley did tell them that she knew where she was going, which is perfectly fine. We did eventually find a very large rolling door that was wide open. And well, I'm an event manager, you're not really gonna stop me from walking in places. So sorry. <laughs> so we walked in that door and quickly realized we probably shouldn't be there as one of the event managers was ahead of us and was roping off the section. Oops, our bad. But listen, the door was wide open and there was no one telling me that we couldn't go in that door. So we just wanted to get out of the rain. We weren't in the way of any of the large machinery and we found our way to the classroom. Upon arriving at the classroom, however, it looked perfectly well set up. The tables were all nicely aligned on the right-hand side. There was a set of optional seating over on the left, and there was a lovely three table set up and a very large projector with taped down cables, and it was on and ready to go. Honestly, 10 out of 10. We love to see that level because I was concerned that we were gonna walk in, it was gonna be a mess, and no one was gonna know what was going on. No, it was great. Everything was set up, it was very clear. There was no projection issues, also because she wasn't using her projector, which would have been really helpful for this class, but a little bit more on that in a little bit. And we arrived about five minutes before the class and there were already people that had been there for clearly quite some time. So we sat and we waited and our instructor, first off, was late. She wasn't super late, but it's just sort of frustrating when a teacher comes in a little discombobulated, clearly having not left enough time before she got here. And this also meant that I couldn't check with her beforehand to see if I could record any part of this class because they ask for no recording without teacher permission. So I wasn't actually able to get any footage of this class because she came in and looked around the classroom and told us, oh no, this absolutely won't work. To me, I'm looking around, I'm going, this classroom is excellently set up. I don't know what the problem is because there is literally nothing wrong with the way it was set up, but it wasn't set up to her liking. And this is the part where she then asked all of the participants who had actively paid $92 to be a part of this class to be event managers and rearrange the classroom. And listen, I'm not saying there's not a potential that she sent in the plans and it didn't happen. However, after taking this course with her, I distinctly think that did not happen. I'm guessing she just either forgot or didn't say anything and just expected the participants to rearrange everything, which as an event manager is a big old no-no. Moving a couple chairs to do one thing, fine. What she wanted us to do was to cut apart the very nicely laid out tablecloths that had been stapled to the tables and rearrange the entire freaking space, which we did eventually do because that's what she wanted. And it's just not professional. It's just not. You don't ask your participants to cut apart tables that have been clearly laid out already very nicely because you didn't submit your plans on time or because it's not laid out to your liking. There are other ways to do your classes and sometimes you just have to adapt if you walk into a room that isn't the way that you were expecting it to be. And so once we had started to rearrange all the tables, then we had the fun time of finding out why maybe having classes in this particular building on the setup day isn't the wisest plan. Because not about five minutes into it, the fire alarm went off. <laughs> And I don't mean like it went off and then immediately turned on. I'm saying this thing was on for easily 10 minutes. And because I am an event manager and I understand emergency protocols, what do I do? I pick up my stuff 
and I begin to leave. And shockingly, uh, the whole class sort of um, lagged. I was like, no, 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 no. We, we exit now. That's what we do. Trust me when I say you take these things seriously. So my friend Haley and I gathered our stuff along with another person at the end of the table and we all exited the building. There were a couple folks that had decided to linger by the door and I looked at them and went, I advise leaving because you never know when these things are real and walked out to a Coca-Cola stage setup. I don't think it was actively used for this event. So we gathered under there for a little bit of reprieve from the fire alarm. The fire alarm is going off. <laughs> this is going well. However, once getting the clear from the fire marshal and team, we went back inside to continue our adventure where we all sat back in our circle to do a pants fitting evaluation because this is class 4010 pants for you. I will not be saying the instructor's name. However, with a very quick Google, you can find out who is teaching this. And because this is the internet, I would like to remind you all, please do not send hate to this person. If I have already emailed the expo and they are moving forward with ramifications for her actions. Because let me tell you that the fire alarm was the least of our problems during this entire class. We began the class and she started with my friend Haley, who has also done a video on this, sharing what she's willing to share about this event. However, what I witnessed was completely inappropriate, period, full stop. Because at this point, the instructor went in with very body negative connotations and verbiage throughout the entire thing, including on her handout that she handed us. But the bare minimum from a teacher to a student in these classrooms is consent. Just because you are teaching a class does not mean that you have automatic consent to touch this human, period, full stop. That goes for universities, that goes for sewing expos, that goes for comic cons, that goes for anyone in a power dynamic from a teacher to a student. And consent was never asked, nor was it given by all 19 participants in this pants fitting extravaganza. What happened to Haley was absolutely inappropriate. And yes, I have asked Haley to get consent to tell part of her story. While she was up there, this teacher not only made very body negative comments about her body, she also then decided to comment on how lovely her butt was and then slapped it. I got my butt slapped. Yeah, you did. I would like to know what part of a pants fitting class involves slapping a student's butt. It doesn't, that's the spoiler alert. There is no way that you needed to touch my friend. And while this woman was knowledgeable for many, many years of pants fitting, and she could tell you all of your adjustments in a flash, this whole thing could have been done one, in a much shorter time, and two, without all the negative connotations and the random tangents that made it last for two hours. Two hours we had to go through this. This woman then went through each of us. And while she did not personally slap my butt, what was very inappropriate for me was that I did choose to wear a dress to this day, but I made sure to include tights so that I could be a part of this class and not flash everyone all of my important bits, right? What was happening was instead of her verbally giving me the cues to turn left, turn right, she would take her hand, go inside the waistband of my tights and pull me around, just like she did with almost every other participant. And instead of saying things like, oh, you have this really lovely feature, this is how you make this change, it was always said in a very negative connotation to the point that she mentioned about how my stomach, because I had a kid, stuck out and was very high. I am extremely uncomfortable with that part of my body, if we're being honest here. And her pointing that out and then saying, oh, what, an, what a weird part of this. I've never seen that before. This is how you make that change. It triggered all of the negative self-talk that I have been telling myself since I had my daughter. And it is really just unacceptable. There are so many other ways to discuss someone's very personal body that they might have issues with that are not this triggering. Editing Stephanie here, realizing that I missed one of the most 
uncomfortable moments of the entire class, and I did want to put it on record that when you go in for a pattern fitting class, if someone asks you to do your crotch rise, that that is completely in your control. Because what happened during this class was out of control. The teacher of the course, instead of having the student hold the tape measure at the waist and going to the top of the crotch, opted to do this. She had the student hold the tape measure at the waist and then took the tape measure and reached in and whether or not she touched this woman, I cannot confirm because I did not ask her, but either way, she got close enough that the woman jumped because she was aiming for the top of her crotch and said the following, is that your PP hole? I have big issues with this. Number one, you do not need to get anywhere near someone's crotch region, period. That is for them to measure. You can just ask. Your finger does not need to go anywhere near that person's body. Number two, Haley was the youngest one in that room. There was no children present in the room. You can say, is that the top of your crotch? You can say many other things that are anatomically correct, but treating everyone like children and calling it a pee pee hole while you reach for this woman's crotch is unacceptable. So we just got out of pants fitting class. I have so many distinct thoughts. Personally, I don't care how old you are. You never have the right to touch someone else's body. You don't. She could have done most of what she was doing without actually having to touch us. Mm -hmm. And honestly, a lot of us were pretty freaking floored watching Haley be the first one up and seeing all like the touching. She was like, wow, that's a lot. And in conjuncture with that. If you've never been to a sewing expo and you want to go and try one and you have triggers surrounding the measurements of your body or how your body generally looks outwardly or just in general the measurements just give you agita please go to a sewing expo but do not take classes that you will have to measure yourself a lot with either that or take a friend who will not tell you the measurements and just write it down for you so that you can process it later there are lots of other fun classes you can take that have nothing to do with your body measurements and just about sewing. So don't be afraid to go to these events, but just know that if those measurements are sensitive, you should probably skip them for now until you can find yourself in a better place between your mind and your body, and it's okay. Now, as a professional event manager, I also have a few notes. The biggest one being, where the f are the trash cans? Ah! Why do we always have room with no trash cans? Yes, I absolutely went to the show floor and I hauled one of the giant steel trash cans that are basically just steel barrels with bags in them that have been taped around the side. Uh, yeah, I did haul one of those down as well. Oh uh, boy. So needless to say, I desperately needed to decompress from that particular event. So after having a very tasty lunch at Urban Chops, if you are in Auburn, Washington and you are not eating at Urban Chops, what are you doing? It's delicious. You need to go right now. Right now. Go. Go forth. You can come back and watch the video while you're eating your delicious bao bun that's like the size of a hamburger. It's so good. Oh, it's so good. And then thankfully with a full stomach, I still needed to decompress some. So I decided to go thrifting. Because while I do think that these type of conferences certainly have a wealth of knowledge to be given, that particular event certainly was not it. However, what I do find works for me is our sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. Skillshare is the largest online learning community for creatives. With a learn by doing approach so that each member can create a project at the end of every video. And for those that might be just beginning their sewing journey, I do advise trying one of their learning paths. Because what they will do is it takes you step by step to build your skills. Whether you want to learn about music, cooking, or productivity, Learning paths have got you covered. And let's be real here on this channel, I don't really teach y'all things except for about patterns, but when it comes to sewing, it's more of a follow along, laugh along with me, and let's see if I can actually finish the garment. 
but these learning paths actually take you through step by step and really give you the tools to be a person who sews. What an idea, ain't it grand? And while I don't really need a full entire path because I have enough tucked up in my gray matter up here to be able to get myself through a project to dubious final results, but at least they're mostly wearable. So what I chose to do was to try a sewing alteration course by Mora Marks. And I will say what I really enjoyed was not only did she take you through slowly, step by step, clearly showing you how to adjust your garments as you go, she also helped me learn an extra little cool tip about how to adjust shoulders, which I had never tried before. And so now I have it in my gray matter so that maybe I can try it in the future for a garment that maybe needs to fit just a little better, Stephanie. What an idea. And if this sounds like something you might enjoy, please do make sure to take advantage of this fabulous offer from Skillshare. Because the first 500 people to use my link in the video description will receive a one month free trial of Skillshare. So get started today by clicking the link down below in the description box and in the first pinned comment. And I wanna thank Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. And then after a good night's sleep and a lot of ranting, it was time for Thursday's classes. Now Thursday, we did make sure to get there for the opening of the show floor. And I will say the crowd that was around us waiting to get in was pretty substantial. It was also kind of cool because that's when I started to be recognized. <laughs> because let me be very clear, I was on the far side of the country. I did not expect to see nearly as many people that recognized my face. Why do I not expect things? things? I don't really know. Because sometimes my brain forgets that the numbers that I see on the screen are actual real humans watching me here on Al Gore's internet. And while it was lovely to say hello to a couple of folks right as we were waiting, then the stanchions were removed and it was a free for all. Originally, I saw a lot of people sort of beelining toward this extra table over on the side. Once we got there, we realized, ah, yes, that was where the reusable shopping bags were. And while initially they were going pretty quickly and they had signs that said only one per person. Uh, spoiler alert, by the time I got there on Friday, there were still huge stacks of them and people were just allowed to take as many as they wanted. So I, I think they were okay with their bags. And once I had sort of tootled through the expo floor a little bit, kind of getting a lay of the land, it was time to find my first class of the day, which was so faster with Aronica B. Cole. And my description told me that I was in room G. However, According to the map that I was handed, the only entrance for G was outside and around the building. There's a problem with that. It was shocking, still raining. We love to be forced outside into the wet and cold. That's that's super fun, cool. Maybe, maybe we shouldn't have done that. And once I was outside, there still weren't really great sign-ins. If you went out through E or D, any of the other earlier ones, apparently the only way in which there was signs is if you had gone around the far side of the building. And uh, then there was one singular, very large sign for room G. And to be clear, the reason I had issues with this, not only was it cold and wet, but also it was not ADA compliant. There was no button on the outside of any of these doors that someone could push and be let in. As we found out once the class had started and someone with a wheelchair was having difficulty entering into the building. Now a volunteer was very quick to jump up and help the person in, but if that's not an ADA access, then that should not have been the main entrance. You should have picked a different main entrance. And clearly this was something that the actual organizers did eventually figure out because by the next day, there was one, not only better signage for G, but two, they had actually pulled the entrance on the inside where the ADA ramp was much easier to attain for those in wheelchairs. Now, as far as so faster went, the crowd was much smaller than the previous day with our pants fitting class. Not that I was complaining. However, the one thing I will say is that while I was a little concerned because I was worried that all of the teachers might be the same as this first teacher, because that was quite actually my first experience with this expo, Aronica could not have more quickly changed my mind about this entire event. Now listen, I am not a set and sleeve girl. Like I'm not going to sew my seam down my sleeve. I cannot stress to you enough how wonderful it was to be in a room with someone like Aronica, who was very clearly not only body positive, was very communicative, had her stuff all together ready to go, and 
is super fun and bubbly and light and younger, so in my actual age range, so it's much easier for me to relate to her. <sighs> I can't tell you how quickly all of my fears were almost wiped away just by being in this one class. She had really great tips about how to sew faster and which corners are okay to cut and which ones are not. And yes, I feel a little called out, but it's fine. <laughs> the biggest complaint I had about sew faster had nothing to do with Ironica whatsoever, nor the layout, nor the safety. What it was is that it was freezing. My brain is already struggling to pay attention to the wonderful words coming out of Veronica's mouth because it's so cold. Found out a little later by a little birdie because I talk to people and I'm nice. They left the air conditioning on. If you were in Florida, that would be fine. You can leave the air conditioning on. Please God, leave the air conditioning on because it's usually like today, 80 degrees outside and it's March. So it's fine. We love a good air con. However, when it is 42 outside, maybe not so much. But yeah, uh, they had left the AC on. And by the next day, with enough complaints, they had realized their error and turned on the heat. But the class overall was absolutely worth it. It was still a lecture style. But this particular lecture style, I f knew what I was getting when I went in. And I feel like I got my money's worth. Those two things are very, very key when you're running an event that the participants not only feel like it's worth their time, it's also worth their money. And this course absolutely was 10 out of 10. I learned which corners I can cut and which corners I can't. Will I listen to it? That's to be determined because I am chaos and I, I don't always care. <laughs> and my next course that I opted to take was a one needle course. And it was the measurements course with Aronica. Now, I am not gonna lie to you in that I, even though I had just gone through an amazing class with her, because of what had happened the previous day, I still went in with a bit of nerves because I wasn't sure if we were gonna go back into body triggering things. And that's nothing on Aronica. Aronica is amazing. It was everything on the trauma that I experienced the day before. So I get into the classroom, I've got my little ticket, my little printout, because they either have you scan a QR code on your phone or on a printed out piece of paper because that's just what they do. Cause there was no app for this. There was just, here's this piece of paper booklet. Don't lose it. Or they also had extra, but your communication with your email is fantastic. Sometimes to the point of over communication, maybe now it's time for an app. But either way, I had my piece of paper. I went into the classroom. Unlike the previous course, this one needle course, which cost $17 was hopping. There was not a free chair to be had in this lecture hall. It was full, which is fantastic. I love that because that to me tells me that this is a good course that lots of people have signed up for. And of course, Erotica comes in. This is not for vanity. The better measurements that you take, the better fitting garments you will have and proves just how amazing person she is. The entire class, I have nothing but positive things to say. Not only did I learn a little bit about how the garment pattern industry measures bodies as a standard, which is super helpful and is not listed anywhere on my patterns that I use. So we, we love to know that information, but it was also, it was just so nice to be in a room where when you're talking about your body, it's not this negative thing. And I, I cannot give Aronica enough props because every time someone would mention something and kind of, you know, be a little down on themselves or say a statement that's, you know, like, oh, well, I have this. And she would immediately flip the script and be like, you're the sexiest version of that I've ever seen. Because the work to get out of this negative body image is constant. It is a constant battle for any anyone, any body type, any gender. It's hard because a lot of mainstream society pushes one main look on us, period, end of story. And if you don't measure up to that, good riddance. No. And she was doing the heavy lifting of really challenging those thoughts and turning them and flipping the script immediately. So she wouldn't let those negative connotations just sit and be awkward. She was immediately flipping the script and turning it into a positive and showing folks their good side and being body positive to the entire time. If I thought the first class had healed me, the second one definitely did. She did the hard work to fix some of what had been broken the day before. 
And so I, for that, if you can ever take a class from Veronica at any of these or go watch her YouTube channel or her Instagram, please do. Please do. Because I cannot tell you how much she helped me. Not only did she give me great tips and tricks, she's also just a fantastic person. But my one note as an event manager of that room is, uh, why was our stage moving? The, the stage moved. Stage moved. The stage was not broken or shimmed or locked in. It was not. Nope. Nope. So she got up onto the stage and I watched her move. I was like, Brrr! like my little stage management what? No, 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 no. Those are free wheels. Why are there free wheels? Why was your stage not locked? Period in the story. That is a huge safety concern for your participants and for the teachers. Double check every morning. Always. You go through every room. You make sure everything that is on wheels does not move unless it needs to move. So if it's a chair and it needs to move, cool. Let it move. If it's a stage and it's not supposed to move, someone should be doing those checks and the volunteer should be noticing that that's happening. So the lovely thing, yes, I did find the social media lounge. Yeah, I am that person, it's fine. After yesterday's absolute dumpster fire, this was such a delight. <laughs> like getting to hang out with Veronica basically all day because I took both of her classes today. So it's been absolutely fantastic. Uh, so that makes a four needle, a two needle and a one needle down, only the three needle tomorrow to take. But yeah, this is going so much better than yesterday already. <laughs> Why was it so traumatizing? Oh, also fun fact, I am randomly running into the people that we took this class with and uh, we all recognize each other because we've all trauma bonded from that four hour experience, which we all collectively agreed was not worth it. But with wrapping up Thursday, it was time for Friday, my final day at Sew Expo. And this one was yet again another early riser with an 8 a.m. beating course. Number 3007, hand beating and embellishing techniques. Couture hand beating. I would like to stress the word couture because while I do fully understand that couture means different things to different people, I was expecting couture, how to lay out these crazy beading designs on gowns and all of the things that go into, you know, the weight and everything. While I was given tips on not picking beads that weigh too much, cutting the fabric larger because as you bead something, it usually eats about two sizes up if it's a fully beaded item. I did get some tips and tricks from this, but the biggest issue I had with this class was the expectation versus the reality. And no, it's not as bad as that meme. But the expectation that I had going in was very high end, very couture finishing. And what I got was what I would at most describe an intermediate beading course, which as a human who has done far too many crafts and including making my own jewelry through college to help support, you know, food and rent and things that I was making things out of sterling silver and I made, you know, jewelry, not this jewelry, but you know, I would make, you know, semi-precious stone drops and all of these things. So I already kind of know about most of the beading stuff as far as intermediate goes, but I really wanted the couture stuff. And I just think it's a matter of the title of the course not aligning with the description of the course. Because the description of the course, when I went back and read it, it does align with what was taught. So we, what was in the description was what the class was, but the title is what threw me off. Because I feel like the title led more into a heavier idea of high-end finishes and really difficult techniques because I was ready for my brain to be, you know, challenged. And uh, the only challenge that I got was when there was one particular edge finishing that I didn't know how to do that I then decided, even though I hadn't been shown how to do it, I was going to try it anyway. And while I didn't exactly get it, I did get something that looked kind of cool. So I'm not mad about it, but it just, to me, it wasn't quite exactly what I was going with. But the biggest problem that this one had is the same problem that So Magical had here in Orlando. It was in a draped classroom with another draped classroom across the way. And both the teachers were on microphones and it was like, no, I can sing louder. No, I can sing louder. No, I can sing louder. I'm like, am I back in opera? What is happening right now? Also, there was not a technician in the room to make sure that everything was ready to go at the start of the class. So she had to call the tech in, get them to set up the microphone. The mic isn't loud enough and she doesn't know how to raise the volume. So we had to call the tech back in to raise the volume. And then I'm sure the teacher across the way called the tech back in. It was 
It's too much, y'all. You can't do these big, intricate classes in a draped room. Stop this. Cordon off things with big, hard walls. Why are we doing pipe and drape in this? You loaded in a whole bunch of machines to the room across the way. Why can't we also load in the really tall type of walls? Because we were on an underhang. We could have actually probably made a full room, but you didn't do that. You cheaped out with the pipe and drape. And it... It hurt everyone in the end. But the one nice thing I will say about the beating course is that the teacher was very open to feedback. She was really clear the entire class that if you had any issues, all you had to do was email them or let her know via the suggestion form that would get emailed to us later. And so I really appreciated knowing that up front because this was the first time she was teaching the course and she was trying to figure out the pacing. And honestly, it wasn't really paced well yet because I f it felt very front heavy with a lot of information that wasn't necessary and there was no real hands-on time until the very, very end. So it didn't feel paced out well. I would have much preferred a class where she showed two or three techniques and then you did it. And then you showed two or three techniques and then you did it. And then you show the really big heavy duty, this one's going to make your brain itch technique and then give you the most amount of time to try and master that one. Because she's very clearly a skilled beater. She had all of these beautiful examples of everything she'd done. It's spectacular. Her work is spectacular. And so that's what I want to learn. I want to learn the really hard stuff. It was a first time class. And so there were a couple of the standard first time hiccups. And Friday is the only day that we actually ate the food there. And by we, I mean everyone around me because I brought a container full of pizza that was very delicious from the night before. And while at least the prices weren't the most astronomical I've ever seen, the one thing I will say is the portion sizes were huge. Like, my hand was smaller than the basket of fries. Were they bland as heck? Yes. Except for the piles of garlic that was on top. There was no salt. There was no pepper. It was just garlic. Garlic and potato. That's it. There was also a beer garden available, but I did not end up trying it. And then to get a real feel for it, I wanted to make sure I stopped by the Showplex on Friday. And oh boy, is there a difference? So if you are going to one of these, I advise going Thursday and Friday because even Friday was packed. It was very, very busy when I went out after the beating class. But the interesting thing about this on Friday is that as the day went on, the crowds got smaller. So if you aim more toward the late afternoon section, it was closer to 3.30, 4 o'clock. There was no one there. There was so much room again. I, it's wild. So clearly the sewing people are morning people. <laughs> and I'm not. Well, here we are. It is the end of my Friday. I have taken all of the classes. I have done all of the things. And I am tired. <laughs> I'm so tired. Don't ever do 8 a.m. classes ever again. Overall, I think So Expo is still a worthwhile event. There was lots of really cool things to see. All of the big dealers, Bernina, Faf, Singer, everybody, brother, everyone was there. So if you wanted to go play with the newest, fanciest machines, if you want to go try a free arm and do cool stuff like that. Green light comes on and now you can move. Oh. Okay, this is addicting. <laughs> It's all there and it's all available to you. There's also really amazing, you know, good scissor dealers and fabrics. I'm gonna smell them. <laughs> and heck, there was a couple vintage shops I even got to shop through. But my problem with this event overall is that the way the structure is laid out, it feels so static. So like one needle courses can only be lectures. Two needles can be lectures or gentle hands-on. Three is definitely hands-on and four is the in-depth courses for Wednesday. I don't like that. Like if I were to teach a one needle course, it would probably be vintage patterns demystified. But would it just be a lecture? Heck no. It's so much easier to do a class like this. I would bring a whole stack of vintage patterns that are like, you know, 70s, 60s that still have all the like the kind of funny markings, but not the ones that are going to be super, super fragile. And I'd bring them and I'd let the people actually touch them and feel them and okay so this mark do you have what questions do you have about these markings is there anything i can answer you know be more hands-on so would i recommend that you go to a sew expo honestly yes but 
I advise that you try and vet every teacher that is going to be teaching a class. I understand that this means there might be a little bit more stress on ticket day. Go to their websites, go to their Instagrams, go to their Facebooks, because you need to know what you're getting into. And honestly, if there's enough desire for this type of stuff, should I teach a course there? Would y'all want to come and actually like do the vintage patterns demystified? Like, let me know. Is that something that you would like? Or would it be easier just to have it here on the channel? I just feel like there's certain things that can't get across through the internet. So is that something you'd like to do in person? Let me know down below. And don't forget if you want to learn more about the wonderful sponsor of this video, Skillshare, that you are making sure to go click the link down below so that you can be one of the first 500 to sign up for Skillshare and get a one month free trial. And I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, I also went to Comic Con here in Orlando, also known as MegaCon, and YouTube thinks you'll like that one right there. And until next time, friends, and when I talk about Comic Con in Seattle, I hope you're sowing chaos. Bye. All right, come on, Haley. What are we doing? We're just doing silly video shenanigans. I'm oh, back here. I'm here. I've been scissored. Oh my god. <laughs>